Howdy guys. Welcome back again. Official Tennessee Ram video here. Oh, uh, well, today's Wednesday. It's my official rant video again. Uh, because as you know, this is going to, it looks like it's going to start being a weekly thing. Every week I'm going to have something to rant about, about Tennessee football. Because it seems to be that all they can do is lose. Um... I mean, as you see right here, this uh, should be the thumbnail, I guess. I don't know. But uh, I, as you can see, all that they can do, all they do is lose. Doesn't matter who they play, where they play, how they play, who plays, who coaches, who's on the field, who's not on the field, who's in the uh, press boxes, who's not in the press boxes, who has a headset on, who doesn't have a headset on. Who has their pads on, who doesn't have their pads on. It doesn't matter. It just seems that they lose. Um, you give South Carolina, you have 70. I'm getting straight into it here because, uh, once again, I'm all worked up again. So, let's go. You give South Carolina 75 yards. 75 yards. Once again, let's say this one more time. 75 yards in penalties. Uh... 75 yards, okay, 75 yards, um, 75 yards, 75 yards, 75 yards, 75 yards, um, I don't know what you're doing on the field, but it clearly ain't playing football, uh, I know I'm going to receive a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, um, hateful, um, no good comments on this video, but I don't even care right now. I really don't. I really, really, really don't care because it's, someone has to say it and it's going to be me because you give up 75 yards to the lame cocks. Um, Lane Cox think that they're all good now because they beat a team who's went 1-13 and in the last 14 SEC conference games that they've had. They've went 1-13, and as in one win, 13 losses. So now that, that, that South Carolina has beat a team that's went 1-13 and in the SEC in the last 14 uh, games that they've had in conference, uh, now that the Lane Cox finally beat a team of that caliber uh, by three points, they think that they have won the national championship. Um, congratulations, South Carolina. Uh, you had a really, 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 really impressive game. <laughs> no, you didn't. Um, let's see, Jake Bentley looked disgusting. Um, he looked disgraceful. Um, Let's see. Your running game looked good. That's about the only thing that you had that looked good. I'm not going to lie. You did run the ball really good. That's what won you the ball game. If you didn't run the ball really good, you would have got beat by a team that's went 1-13 in the last 14 SEC conference games. Uh, you would have got beat pretty bad by them. Um, despite the 75 penalty yards, despite the 5 um false start, despite the nine total penalties, uh, despite the turnover, despite it all, uh, you would have got beat if you didn't have your running game. So go ahead and give your running backs a pat on the back because they did, they truly deserve it because they won you the ball game. Not your coach, um, Will Muschamp. Uh, not your quarterback, Jake Disgrace Bentley. And not your team, South Carolina Lamecocks. Um, so here's what I got to say. You guys might be thinking, well, what is a Tennessee fan doing roasting another team? Well, <laughs> I mean, I've heard it all about my team. I know that my team loses. I know that they went one and 13 in the last 14 SEC conference games. I know that they went four and eight last year with an 0 and eight SEC conference game record. And I know that their quarterback Jared Gonatano, which I am going to start talking about right here in just a second is complete. Let me change my choice of words here. He is not ready for the start at the moment. At the moment might be, might actually mean never, but at the moment we'll say. Um, now, on Jared Guntano. This man, Jared, 
Okay, so we still had a chance to win the ball game. Despite all the turnovers, despite everything, we still had a chance to win that ball game. We was on the drive. Three minutes left of the ball game. The, the last time you're going to touch the ball in the ball game, you should know that because South Carolina, they're running the ball. They are running it with pride. Our defense, complete trash in the fourth quarter. Really, really good in the first and second. Third, not so much. Fourth, complete trash. So complete trash in the fourth quarter. So you know that they're not going to stop them. So you know if you don't convert on this fourth and five, you pretty much lost the game because it's 24 to seven. Well, then a good old handy dandy false start comes back into place. The fifth one in the game, the fifth, five, five false starts. And I know that at least one of them came from the backup for Trey Smith. So congrats to you. Um, but 25 yards and false starts. And most of them came on third down. That also cost us the ball game. So offensive line, please get your game together. Please. And Jared, please at least tell the offensive line what your snap count is going to be. My goodness. Your awareness, your snap count, your throwing, your everything just seems off with you, man. I mean, yeah, you had a good game against Auburn. You had a good, relatively good three quarters against South Carolina, you got your most completions, which was 27, which <laughs> to say that you got your most completions 27 in your second year in college, <sighs> ain't too good after you've had as many starts as you've had, but whatever, man, you got it, so congratulations, I guess, on that. Um, I can't really say nothing because I'm not there playing, And but if I was, I'd probably have more than 27 in a game but anyway that's not what we're talking about here we're talking about Jared Donatano and we're talking about Tennessee's offensive line which Tennessee's offensive line is complete trash it there's no, no other word describes it better than complete trash they're a disgrace um they 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 just it's just, it's just terrible and I know I don't seem like a ball fan right now but I am I'm just calling out my team because right now they're being very, very, very disgraceful. Um, so offensive line, you lost Brent Ryan Kennedy. Kennedy. So I understand that. Then you lost Trey Smith. So I understand the offensive line being trash. I understand that. That's understandable. Uh, I can accept that. The, the 25 false start yards, I can't. Maybe 15. But 25, I, I don't understand how... I don't understand that. That's that's one false start per offensive lineman. So left guard, left tackle, center, right guard, right tackle, all of them got at least, all of them, one false start. That's what that would be like. I don't know if they did or not. I, I, know that, I don't know exactly who all got the false starts. I know that one of them was the backup for Trey Smith, but that's just about all I know. Uh, because I was up in the air every time. False start, false start, false start. So I was up in the air, so I didn't really pay attention to who it was on. But that, that, five, having five of them is just like having all, every offensive lineman give you one false start, which is terrible, which is which is terrible. Most games, you don't even see one. Or, you, most games, you don't see no more than one or two. Uh, we got five of them. And they was all on third down. So back to the game drive decision. Okay, so it's fourth and five, and Garrett Tano had a chance to win it. Well, we get the false start backs up to fourth and ten. Well, um, the announcers on TV is like, "Oh no, this is Garrett Tano's favorite position. He loves being for. He loves being third and eight, third and nine, fourth and eight. Uh, he can throw deep. Oh, dude, come on now. You don't need to throw deep. You need to throw down to the first la uh, to the first down markers and get the first down. Man, you still have two minutes left in this ball game. Don't go and try to throw deep on fourth and ten. So, you know, obviously they had to go for it on fourth down, which I understand that. Uh, but, no, nope. here you go. Snap the ball. You have Garrett Tunnel sitting back there 25 seconds later, still holding the ball and gets drilled. Like, I don't know what this guy's thinking. I don't know what's going through his head. I don't know if he's sitting back there daydreaming about some girl that he met. I don't know what he's doing. But he's obviously not playing football because he's sitting back there. He snaps the ball, right? He's looking, looking, looking. Still looking. Still looking. Oh, no. A guy's coming for me. What do I do, coach? Oh, no. No one's open. Uh, Marcos Callaway's covered. Uh, Jawan Jr.'s covered. Uh, coach, where do I throw it? Hurry up, tell me. I'm about to get hit. Oh, no. I see a guy. Hit. Right as he goes to throw it. 
Dude just spent 25 seconds in the back of the pocket, man. It's it's absolutely disgraceful, man. And if you go back and look at the play, man, he didn't he didn't have to throw deep. I mean, it's simple. You run a cross route, you run a hitch, you run a cutback once you pass the first down line marker, and boom, you're golden, man. You don't have to throw deep. So, um, uh, Tyson Helton, I don't know what you're doing calling a deep pass play call on fourth and ten, and Jared Gontano, I don't know what you're doing um, holding the ball for 25 seconds uh, on fourth and ten. So I, I just don't, I just don't understand where that logic comes from. I mean, you have Jarek Gonatano holding the ball for 25 seconds on 4th and 10. And then you have, not really 25 seconds. In reality, it was about 8 or 9, uh, maybe 7. Uh, and then you have Tyson Hilton calling a deep pass play call on 4th and 10. I'm no, I, no offense, but I don't really like Tyson Hilton. Um, I don't know what went through Jeremy Pruitt's head to hire him, but I don't really like him. Uh, Jeremy Pruitt, I don't have a problem with him. He's, I, I guess he's a good head coach. I don't have a problem with him. Better than Butch Jones um, or Lyle. Um, and, um, I mean, our defense, they start off good. But when you put your defense on the field every single play and you go three and out consistently, what more do you expect them to do? I mean, they do play good to start off. Um, and if our def and if our offense was play on the field more, they did play a little bit more in South Carolina. I'll give them that. But if they just play on the field more, then you know our defense will get the rest that they need and hopefully play the whole full game like they play the first quarter usually. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, we play Charlotte this week. Um, of course, going to be in an easy W. Charlotte 49ers. I don't even know if they'll put up a touchdown. I think it'll be what they, they might put up two field goals. I'll give them. I'll give them two field goals. I really feel like they're only going to score one field goal, but I'll give them two field goals um, just out of the kindness of my heart, I guess. Uh, Tennessee is going to score at least 49 in that game. My score prediction is 49 to 6. Uh, reality, I want to say 49 to 3, but I'll give them the 6. So 49 to 6. Uh, hopefully, Keller Chris gets a lot of playing time in that ball game like he deserves. Um, I don't understand. That's one thing I don't understand about Jeremy Pruitt. I don't understand the logic in this dude's head to not start Keller Christ. Um, Keller Christ played at Stanford, who was ranked in like the top 10 last year. Well, actually, I think maybe it was about number 12 last year. Better than what we were. We were 4-8. and eight, Okay. They finished 11-2. and two, So Keller Christ is 11-2 as a starter. He started that whole season just about with them. If not the whole season, he started it most of the games. I'm pretty sure he started the whole season though. So he's 11 and 2 as a starter. Um, makes fantastic passes. Um, came out in the in the Tennessee and Alabama game when Garrett Tarno got injured because he sits back there and holds the ball for 25 seconds. Um, now, now that, that I do like Garrett Garantano. I do. He's really he's a really good guy, and I love him. And hopefully he'll be ready to start for us possibly next year, maybe the year after that. But as of right now, I don't think that he's ready to start for us. But I do love him. I love his strength. I love his determination. I love his leadership. And I love how he just takes hits for his team. But we all have to admit, we have to come to an agreement point. He does bring mo he does bring some of those hits upon himself by staying in the pocket too long and holding the ball too long. And I don't like to see it. Uh, so please, Jeremy Pruitt, do us all a favor. You can play Garrett Gondor. I'm not telling you not to. You can play him a little bit, yes, because he needs to get that experience in. But please do us all a favor and please start Keller Christ. Please. I wanted to see him start from week one all the way in the preseason. I, I thought that he would win the job. I don't know how he didn't. I don't understand. Uh, but uh, week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, I've always wanted him to start. Please, please, Jeremy Pruitt, do us a favor and please start Keller Chris in this game. Please. Now, we're going to win it regardless if we start him or not, but please start him in this game and let him prove to you in this game that he has what it takes. He's already proved it in the Alabama game when he came in and scored 14 back-to-back -back points, something that Garrett Tarno wasn't doing. Um, so, he proved it to you there. I mean, uh, something that Josh Dobbs didn't even do put up 14 back-to-back -back points against Alabama's uh, defense, especially in the state of the defense that, they're, that they have now. Their defense is fantastic, 
and he put up 14 back-to-back -back points. So he proved to you that he deserves to start. So please do us all a favor and start Keller Chris for the remainder of this season. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, we'll find a way to make a bowl game. Anyway, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I'll have another video coming out here soon about this week's schedule in the SEC. Go Vols.